how are you doing today? It's a question that we, we ask each other to, to fill up conversation, to uh, uh, fulfill social niceties. And many times we ask this question without really wondering what the response is. Sometimes we hear this question and we don't actually think about what it actually means for our lives. So I want to create some space today and ask you, how are you doing today? Are you feeling at rest? Are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling concerned? Are you feeling depressed? How are you feeling today? Because today and over the next several weeks, we're creating space to really look into how we think, look into how we feel, look into how we're doing right now to see where Jesus wants to intersect in that area of our life. We're going through this series right now all about Jesus and our mental and emotional health to figure out where Jesus is, how Jesus cares about our mind, and how he wants us to experience his presence and his hope in the midst of even some of our, our biggest difficulties in our minds and in our emotions. So as we come to this space today, are you hurting? Do you feel alone? Are you anxious? Are you depressed? Are you grieving? Are you in need of rest? As we come to this space today, we want you to know that Jesus cares about you. He cares about your mind. He cares about where you are and how you're doing. And today and over the next several weeks, we're going to be talking about how Jesus fits into our minds, how Jesus fits into our mental health. Um, for those of us who have mental disorders or mental illnesses, where is Jesus in the midst of that? What kind of peace or hope is he trying to offer us in the midst of that? We're here to take some time to find out how Jesus cares about our mind, our emotions, and how he wants us to move into his resurrected life in that and help other people experience it as well. So today, as we start off, we want to spend a little bit of time talking about what is a mental illness or a mental disorder, because that's what we're going to be talking about a lot over the next few weeks. And uh, one of the things we'll see is that it's a spectrum, right? It's not just a, you have anxiety, bam, mental disorder. You don't have anxiety, boom, you're normal. That's not how it works so much at all. It's a spectrum, right? Um, if you experience a little bit of anxiety, there's a chance that you might kind of fit on that spectrum. If you experience chronic depression, there's a chance that you might fit on that kind of spectrum. And as we're going to find out as we move on today a little bit, it's something that many of us experience. And if you do not experience it, chances are you know someone who experiences it. So what is a mental illness or mental disorder? Well, it's a wide range of mental health conditions, a huge spectrum of things that affect your thinking, your feeling, your mood, and your behavior. It's not just something that is a, a mind thing. It's something that affects several areas of your life. They may be occasional, might be something you struggle with occasionally, or long-lasting. It might be a chronic thing that affects you. Chronic depression, chronic anxiety, uh, obsessive-compulsive behavior. They can affect your ability to relate to others and function each day. And if you've struggled with this, you know what that feels like. If you've struggled with depression in your life, you know the feeling of not being able to get out of bed bed each morning, not being able to relate to other people sometimes because they don't necessarily experience the gravity of what you are going through. And uh, it's not just something that affects one of us or a couple people. It's something that affects all of us. And it's important that we understand that. Uh, I got several uh, pieces of information from credited sources like the World Health uh, Organization, like the uh, John Hopkins Medical Institute, like the um, um, Associ National Association for Mental Illness, or to name a few. And uh, based on sev several of the information that they have gotten from several things, um, it's estimated that 26% of people suffer from a mental disorder in any given year. That's a pretty huge number. and That's a national number. And uh, of those people, many suffer from more than one. It's not just, a, oh, I have obsessive compulsion, but like, likely if you um, have obsessive thoughts, you also experience extreme anxiety. Uh, anxiety and depression tend to go together. Um, it's something that uh, uh, nationally affects a lot of people. 
Uh, nationally, depression affects uh, an estimate of 17.3 million people and globally affects 264 million people. That's a huge number of people experiencing and struggling with and experiencing depression. And uh, it's also estimated that 31.1% of people will experience some form of pretty intense anxiety sometime in their life. That's a lot of people. That's, you know, almost a third of people. And it's not just something that affects adults or something that only affects certain people. That's something that affects children and adolescents as well. Uh, according to the World Health Organization, 10 to 20 percent of children and adolescents suffer currently from some kind of mental disorder. That's 10 to 20 percent worldwide. And when it comes to mental disorders, 50% of mental disorders in people begin by the age of 14. That means half of the people who uh, have experienced um, chronic or occasional mental disorders, it has happened by the age of 14 and 75% by the mid-20s. That means three out of four people who experience these kinds of things have experienced it by the time they are in their mid-20s. It's something that affects a lot of people. And a lot of these numbers, a lot of these percentages have been taken from the last couple of years. And that doesn't even factor in how much of this has most likely been escalated as we've experienced the crisis of pandemic over the last several months, right? One thing about crisis is that it tends to be an accelerator. It tends to accelerate things that are already there. And on top of that, we experienced things like quarantine, where there was a lot of isolation. We experienced a lot of grieving as um, some people have lost their lives and as some people have um, e experienced extreme losses in their life over, um, thing over their life just completely and totally changing, completely and totally changing. So it's important to note that even with these numbers, there's a chance that these numbers have gone up pretty substantially. And there's a chance that maybe you're watching today and you haven't really experienced a lot of this stuff before. But as soon as March hit of this year, you're beginning to see what it means and what it what it looks like to experience anxiety and depression and grief and all kinds of these things. It's likely that these kinds of things are growing. And it's really important that we know in light of that, that Jesus wants to meet you wherever you are today. Whether you're struggling, whether you're doing well, whether you grew up in a background that says you have to do certain things to get to Jesus, we want you to know that that is not the case and that Jesus wants to meet you where you are today. Are you anxious? Are you depressed? Are you grieving? Are you struggling just to exist every day? Are you struggling just to get out of bed every day and just do the bare minimum that you need to do? We want you to know that Jesus wants to meet you wherever you are today. He's not an absent God. He is a God who wants to be present. He is not a God who, who looks at you with how to care, but he cares about your mind, your soul, your body, and your health. As we're going to see here in just a minute. In fact, Jesus says this beautiful thing in Matthew chapter 11. He says to, to the people following him, people who were no strangers to experience anxiety and depression and being an outcast many times, Jesus says to them, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Are you weary and burdened today? Jesus says, come to me, you're my kind of people. Jesus says, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will, in me, you will find rest for your souls. Jesus wants to offer you rest, even in moments of chaos, even in moments of struggle, even in moments of your, your mind and your emotions not operating the way that you want them to. And he is not an angry God who is going to be upset with you, but he is gentle and humble in heart. And I'm aware that this is maybe not a picture of Jesus that you were given growing up. But this is the Jesus as he actually communicates himself, gentle, humble in heart, wanting the weary and the burden to come to him to find rest for their souls. And maybe you grew up thinking that Jesus is only concerned about your soul and he doesn't really care about what happens to your mind and your body. But Jesus says something quite different in Matthew 22. In fact, Jesus says the greatest commandment for people to follow is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul. And with all of your mind. 
Jesus cares about the mind, and Jesus cares about all of you. One of the, the biggest struggles in the early church was to think that Jesus only cared about your soul, and he didn't really care so much about your mind, that there was this division, this dichotomy between your mind and your soul and your body. But Jesus kind of redefined things a little bit when that happened and says, no, I care about all of you. I want you to honor me with your body, with your mind, with your soul, with your heart. I care about it and I want it all. Jesus cares about you today, all of you, and he wants to, all of you to experience hope in him. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take kind of a bird's eye view at this idea of the mind and thoughts and mental health, kind of a, a general view. And over the next several weeks, we're going to look at specifics, right? And um, so I want you to know that, um, especially today, this is going to be a very general thing that can apply to all of us and is a way of existing that I believe uh, is going to help us move towards a place of mental and emotional health. But I don't want you to think that this is the band-aid that's going to fix everything. That's one thing we want to avoid in this series because... Uh, Quite often, life doesn't work in such a way where you get a principle at the end of a lecture and boom, I'm not going to struggle with anxiety anymore. That's just not how life works. But the beauty of Jesus is that he enters into our darkest places and he offers his hope and he offers his presence. That's something that we need to remember through this whole series it is that Jesus offers his hope and his presence, and we're going to learn spiritual practices and things that can help us move closer to that. But it's not just a quick little Band-Aid fix. Uh, we want to try to develop things in our life that move us towards a greater level of health, to develop habits and, our, and disciplines in our life that move us towards that. Um, but that's not just a quick, it's going to be fixed overnight kind of thing. And that sometimes in life, we experience suffering and we don't even always see the improvement right away. And we don't always um, experience it to the degree that we want to. But Jesus offers his presence and his hope even in the midst of that. And that's something important that we need to remember today. So today is a little bit of a general bird's eye view as we start this series. And over the next several weeks, we're going to hit the specifics like anxiety, like fear, like grief, like depression, and things like that. So as we begin today, we want to look at Jesus talking to us and our minds, the way Jesus wants us to look at our minds, the way he wants us to view our minds, and the way we are to experience mental transformation as we come to him. And one of the most important verses for that is in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. We're going to look at this one and a couple more today to learn what it means to honor God in our thought life and how to gain some ground in the way that we think. The Apostle Paul, Jesus speaking through Paul, says to believers in the church in Rome, do not conform to the patterns of this world. In other words, the world has a way of operating. And the way the world operates is prone towards destruction. It's prone towards not operating the way it needs to, to be at its highest state of health. And if you follow Jesus, do not conform to the patterns of this world. Some of the messiest stuff that happens in the church is when we begin to operate in the way the world does rather than in the way that Jesus wants us to. That doesn't mean that all things in the world work, are bad, but it means that we do need to honestly evaluate and look at the things that we let into our life and think, is this a worldly pattern that is going to lead to the destruction or death, or is this a gospel pattern that is going to lead to life and the testimony of Jesus Christ? And Jesus says, don't conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by your mind being renewed. So how do we renew our mind? Well, it involves in what we put into our mind. The things that we let into our mind, the things that we let into our life have a huge effect on how our mind gets renewed. So if we're Spending time with Jesus, if we're developing a prayer life with him, if we're seeking him in his word, that is going to, over time, change the way that we think, change the way that we look at things, change the way that we operate in this life. And what's interesting about this word transformed is it's this word, the Greek word, which means metamorphosis. It creates this word picture of a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. Now, 
I'm sure that many of you, especially if you live in the Pacific Northwest and you go through the trees and out in the forest and things, have caught a caterpillar at one time or another. And what do you do with it? You get your caterpillar, it kind of crawls onto your hand and you take it back home and you get a plastic or a glass jar, put them in there, you give them a couple twigs, a couple leaves to eat, you put the lid on, you poke some holes in him so he can breathe or else that caterpillar is not going to make it to butterfly world. And you sit and you wait. And eventually over time, this little guy will eat his leaves and eventually you'll wake up one day and in the jar on maybe one of the twigs that you put in there, you'll notice that he's turned into a cocoon. And in this cocoon, the caterpillar is changing. He begins a metamorphosis where he changes from a caterpillar to a gorgeous, beautiful butterfly. That's the, the kind of image, the kind of word that is used here for transformed. That as we let Jesus renew our minds, as we let our minds be totally overwhelmed with who Jesus is, a metamorphosis happens. We become different people than who we used to be. We look more like Jesus people than we do people who are angry or, or frustrated. But the interesting thing about metamorphosis is that in order to live in this new state, certain things have to die. When a caterpillar changes into a butterfly, this interesting thing happens where the caterpillar almost has to cease to exist in order to become a butterfly. It essentially melts down into this weird goo and then is kind of reconstructed into a butterfly. It, it's almost like it actually dies in order to really live. And in, in context of our mind, it's not going to be possible for the realities of Jesus to renew our mind if we're letting poison and garbage into our mind at the same time. Those two things don't operate together very well. And chances are we are not going to be experiencing the victory in our thought life that we want to if we are constantly letting in poison and garbage. There are certain thought patterns, certain information, certain things that we let into our minds that we are going to have to get rid of in order to truly experience the renewal of mind that Jesus wants us to. I mean, if you think about it, how do you start your day? What is the first source of information that you let into your mind in the beginning of a day? Chances are that is going to define your day. So if you just um, open up yourself to hate, to fear, to anxiety, whether that be on social media or whatever that is, chances are your day is not going to start out that good. Your mind is not going to be operating. Your thought life is not going to be operating at the level you want it to because we've let in garbage and poison first thing. I think it's so important that beginning of the day, the end of the day, in the middle of the day, we are taking time to let Jesus transform and renew our mind by letting him in and limiting the sense of the, the amount of poison or garbage that we are letting into our minds from other sources. It also says in Colossians 3, 1 about, about thought life and everything about choosing good thoughts led into our life. Uh, the author says to followers of Jesus, since you have been raised to new life in Christ, remember that you have Christ has found you and that you are raised to new life in him. Set your sights on the realities of heaven, not the garbage of the world, not the things around you that are just totally poisonous to your thought life, but set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Hand. Now, pay attention specifically to that. God's right hand. That is a place of authority. That is a place of power. And the fact that Jesus is sitting there is to say that Jesus is not worried or concerned with anything. One of Jesus' roles is the role of priest. And priests used to never sit down because people were sinning all the time. But Jesus, the pictures of Jesus we see in heaven are not him standing, but him sitting because sin and death has been taken care of in his cross and in his resurrection. And he sits in a place of authority and power at God's right hand. We don't need to live a life of, of confusion. We don't need to live a life of frustration, of worry, of letting all this garbage of fear into our lives because Jesus 
is sitting at the right hand of God. And part of winning the battle of over our thought life is to set our sights on the realities of heaven where Jesus sits at the place of honor at God's right hand. That's another reason it's important that we fill ourselves up, fill our minds up regularly with the word of God, with Jesus, with prayer, because it's a way to remind ourselves again and again and again and again that we've been raised to a new life in Christ and that he sits in a place of authority and power and control at the right hand of God. That is so important for us to 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 bring into our lives, to know, to have our minds renewed. We need to remember where Jesus is, that we are actually seated with him in the high places if we are found with him, and remind ourselves of the realities of heaven. So what does that look like? What does that look like to renew our mind with good things, to re renew our mind with the things of God, to set our sights on Jesus? Well, there's this beautiful section of scripture in Philippians 4, which talks a little bit about that. It talks about the kinds of things that we are to set our sights on, the things that we are to let flood our mind. And as we look at this list here, I think it would be important to think of in our lives, okay, what kind of things am I letting into my life that relate to this behavior? And what kinds of things am I letting into my life that are contrary to this behavior? Because chances are that we need to be letting more in of the things that line up with this stuff and less of the things that are the antithesis of this kinds of things, the opposite of this kind of things. So the author says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true. That's what you need to let into your mind. And we live in a world and we live in a, a era of fake news where people don't fact check things, where people just post ridiculous things that are untrue. Christians should be the last people who are propagating, who are sharing, who are communicating things that are untrue. The gospel is all about truth and light. And so we need to let in things that are true. And if we are um, constantly realizing that there are things in our life that are giving us false information, feeding us lies, we need to limit and block that kind of stuff. Christians should be the primary people through which truth comes from. Whatever is noble, whatever is uh, above and beyond, whatever is very righteous, right? Uh, when you meet a person of nobility, they are infectious. You can't help but want to hang out with people of nobility, people who um, are the same in private as they are in public, people who um, operate in such a way that they share the goodness of Christ through their actions in their private and in their public life. What kind of noble thoughts do you need to let into your life? Whatever is right, Whatever is, 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 is righteous is a way to look at this. Um, are we letting righteous things into our life or are we letting garbage things into our life? Uh, righteous things are the things that we should dwell on, the things that we should put in our mind, the things that we should put in our heart, the things that we should have transform us. Are you letting righteous things into your life? What kind of TV are you watching? What kind of movies are you watching? Is it the kind of righteous things in your life or is it kind of on the sketchier side? Then it says whatever is pure. Purity is a beautiful thing. And in Jesus Christ, those of us who have struggled with this, those of us who have uh, lived lives that were considered anything but pure, the purity of Jesus is put on us. That is beautiful. And so we are asked to live a thought life that lives in accordance with what Jesus has already accomplished in us. He has already purified us by his death and his resurrection. And we are to live in that. Are we letting things into our minds and into our hearts that lead us towards living a life of impurity or lead us into a thought process of purity? Block the things in your life that would seek to keep you from purity, but instead fill your mind up with things that help you stay pure. Whatever is lovely. I love this word so much. Whatever is lovely. This word lovely evokes emotions in me of specific people. You ever meet certain people and you talk about them and you just think, oh, those are just lovely people. Those are the kind of people that just permeate joy. Those are the kind of people that just permeate the goodness and the wonder of Jesus Christ. I love those kinds of people. And this word lovely makes me think of that. Things of um, um, wholesome, things that are of good nature, things that um, just 
fill you with such such a good feeling of God's goodness and the way God operates in the world. Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, things that are, are worthy of being admired. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. We are to think about things that are true, things that are right, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are admirable, things that are excellent, things that are worthy of praise. We are to set our minds on these things. So I ask you, as you look at this list, Philippians 4, 8, I invite you to read over this several times this week. Are we letting things into our thought life that encourage these things? Or are we letting things into our thought life that hinder or negate these things? Because I think that we need to embrace more things that help us think of these things and block the kinds of things that keep us from thinking of these things or cause us to think of the opposite of these kind of things. So what do I do with this? What do I do with the fact that I know that Jesus cares about our minds? He cares about our emotion. He wants our minds to be renewed by focusing in on him in these areas that we look at in Philippians 4. 8. What do we do with these? I think one of the most important first things that we need to do is we need to pay attention to the things that you're letting in. In other words, think about what you are thinking about. Very seldom do we actually do this, and we end up hurting for it. So this week, I want you to take several days, uh, starting today, take today, tomorrow, and Tuesday, the next three days, and keep a little piece of paper with you, or you could have your phone, you can, you can make notes in your phone. Make a note of the things that you're letting into your mind. What kind of TV shows are you watching? Uh, how do you start your day? What kind of information do you let into your mind at the start of the day? How many times are you checking social media during the day? Uh, uh, what kind of people are you talking to during the day? You need to pay attention to the things that you're putting your attention on. Think about what you are think about, thinking about and make some notes as to what that is to understand what you need to adjust. Once you've done that, you need to think of these next two things. Number two, start letting in the right kinds of information. After you pay attention to what you're paying attention to, you need to know what you need to keep, what you need to get rid of. What you need to keep, what you need to get rid of, and what you need to start letting in. So start letting in the right kinds of information into your mind. Do you have the kind of people who point you to Jesus in your life? Are you spending time with God in his word? Are you spending time with God in prayer? Are you spending time doing things that are life-giving and focus your attention on how good God is? Those are the kinds of the things you need to keep, and those are the kinds of things that you need to start letting in. So find out, am I spending enough time with God in his word? Am I spending enough time with God in prayer? Am I setting time to meditate on and think about God? If not, you need to start letting in that kind of stuff. Make some, make some time this week. Set some budget, some time to do those kinds of things. And finally, the other thing we need to do is block poisonous information. There's a lot of garbage in this world. There's a lot of poison in this world. And it's so easy for us to just let us soak up in our mind. Our mind becomes a sponge that just soaks that up. And the more we soak that in, as, as pressure happens in the life, it's almost like that sponge is wrung out. And whatever we have put in that sponge, whatever we've allowed to soak up in the sponge of our mind, is what comes out at other people. So if we're letting poisonous information into our minds, that's what's going to come out. So pay attention to the things that you're letting in. Make make a, make a note over several days this week of the ways you're letting things into your mind. And once you do that, start letting in the right kinds of information and block out the poisonous information. That's gonna, what's going to be so helpful to renewing our minds. And whether you struggle with mental health, whether you don't struggle with mental health, this is a principle that as a Christ follower, we need to adopt. It's so important in order to live the life that Jesus wants us to. It's not going to be the easiest. It's not going to happen overnight. But we can adopt things this week that lead us to a greater area of health. And this is a very general way of achieving mental health that all of us need to embrace as followers of Jesus. And like I said before, and I want to iterate again, um, this series is not about an end-all, be-all, snap your fingers, this is the one principle that's going to save you from whatever you're struggling with. This series is about 
experiencing the presence of Christ in our struggles with our mind, uh, experiencing his, his, his presence and his hope, and finding principles that we can integrate into our daily life to move towards that spot of health, to move to a greater level of health. It's not a put a Band-Aid on it, it's all fixed. It's about experiencing Jesus' peace uh, in his presence and in his hope and allowing him to use our struggles and experience his grace in the midst of it with certain things that we adopt. And part of the way of doing that is these three things right here. It's very important to moving towards that. And as I said before, we'll get into more specifics about the mind, like anxiety, fear, uh, depression, and things like that in the coming weeks, which we want you to hang around with us for. But more important than anything, we want you to know today that Jesus cares about your mind. That if, if we struggle in our mind, that is not something that Jesus overlooks. That's something that Jesus sees and that's something that Jesus cares about. And he wants to us to experience his hope and his presence in the midst of that. Do you struggle with the kind of thoughts that you let in? Do you struggle with anxiety, with depression, with obsessive compulsion, with any amount of things in your mind and in your emotions Jesus wants in today? And he proved that when he came down to earth. If he was a God who didn't care, he would have just stayed up in heaven looking down at us. But Jesus did not consider equality with God as something to be gained. And he took on the very nature of a servant and he came down to the earth to experience our brokenness, to sit with us in our brokenness. In the first century, there were people who had struggles with their mind, with their bodies, with their emotions, with their social class. And Jesus came to bring presence and hope in the midst of it all. And he wants to do the same with you today. His cross says he experiences the depth of pain that we all experience and his resurrection says that there is hope and presence for us who would put our trust in him. Will you let him in today? Will you invite Jesus in to your mind, to your heart, to your emotions so that he can offer his presence and his hope? Even in the darkest areas of your life, Jesus wants to shine. Will you let him in today? Father God, we come before you today, and I thank you so much for the fact that you care about all of us, God. You're not a God who's absent, but you are a God who cares about all of us. Father God, we love you. We thank you. We give you everything that we are today, and we ask you today that you would help us to think the kind of things that we need to think. Pay attention to what we're paying attention to, God, and help us to meditate on the things of you, the things of goodness, the things of purity, the things of righteousness, and for us to identify and block the poisonous and negative things in our life that you don't want us focusing on. We give it to you today, God, and I pray for all of us as we begin this journey of understanding mental health, that we would experience you, we would experience that you offer your presence in our anxiety, in our depression, in our obsession, in all these things that seek to hinder us and hurt us, God. You are there in the midst of it. We pray that that hope would permeate our lives and that we would be able to experience your grace in all of these areas as we move on in this series. God, we love you. We thank you. We give you everything that we are today. And it is in your holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. I ask that you would uh, continue to join us as we continue in on this series and we look at the uh, specifics of how Jesus intersects with our mental health. And I also invite you to share this with people. There's so many of us that struggle with our mental or emotional health. And I ask that you would share this with them, that they would be invited in this journey as well as we move towards understanding how Jesus offers his presence and our hope in the midst of it. I hope you have a wonderful week this week. I pray that Jesus would reveal the ways that he wants to uh, uh, help you with your thought life. And I invite you to join us next week online at 10 o'clock as we specifically are gonna talk a little bit about uh, mental health, fear, and anxiety. It's going to be really, really wonderful. May you be blessed this week. May God uh, offer his presence and his hope to you in everything that you, that, that you do. And above all, that you would know that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords cares about you, cares about your mind, and wants to meet you where you are at. Be blessed today, and we will connect with you soon. God bless, everyone.